Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the podcast. It is time for the Daily Dive for May 7th, 2024. Hopefully, I won't lose my voice before we finish. <clears throat> we start with Rainy Quali, somebody we've never started with or included at any time. We've talked about Margaret Quali, we've talked about Andy McDowell, the mother of Rainy Quali, but we've never talked about Rainy Quali. So last week, there was a little blip. And basically, Rainey, who was born Rainsford Dubose Quali, filed for temporary guardianship of a young girl alongside Anthony John Wilson. And according to the legal documents, the duo claimed the child's safety is at risk if left in the care of her biological mother. And Quali and Wilson in this filing. They asked the court to grant them custody of a girl named Wyoming Perry. And they met the child's mother while filming a documentary on train hopping and have been caring for the little girl since December of last year. And they said that the child's mother, Cheyenne Perry, who prefers to be called crazy with a K, was not only unable to cater to her daughter's needs, but could not create a safe environment for herself and the child. <clears throat> so Quali and Wilson said, hey, we've been providing Wyoming with a safe and loving home. We've been caring for all her needs. And that if she wasn't in our care, she would live on the streets with her mom and be exposed to several vices. And those included drug use, unsafe conditions, homelessness, and a risk of being removed by Child Protective Services. Wyoming does not have any other relatives who are stable enough to care for her. Petitioners have a strong bond with the child, and it is in the child's best interest to remain with the petitioners who have cared for her for the majority of her life and can provide a safe and stable home for her. Now, Wyoming's mom wasn't willing to leave her daughter in Qualley and Wilson's care. She had been demanding to be the child's primary caretaker and insisted on moving her to a different location. As they said in the original pleading, a few weeks ago, Crazy insisted on taking Wyoming to live in a broken down van parked on the street with her homeless boyfriend and their two dogs, saying it was a dangerous environment. Wyoming was in danger because her mother drives without a driver's license. She does so with the child in the front seat. The problems didn't end there. She stores several gas cans in the van that emit dangerous fumes. <clears throat> The fumes coming out of those cans was so toxic that Wilson got a headache after being inside the van for only a few minutes. So following this, Wyoming's mom claimed she would move to her father's ex-wife's home, but refused to allow the petitioners to visit. Wyoming's mom claimed that she had a place to stay, but Qualley and Wilson say she still lives in vehicles. And they didn't understand the gravity of the situation until Crazy called them a week later to care for the girl following the deterioration of her health. <clears throat> They found Crazy dry heaving in front of a broken down bus where she was staying. Her dogs were running wild in the street while Wyoming was sitting in the grass crying, wearing nothing but a t-shirt in the cold weather with mucus covering her face. Wyoming had a bad cough, possible ear infection, but her mom had refused to take her to the doctor. Instead, she asked Qualley and Wilson to take care for the girl temporarily and demanded her return when she was healthy. <clears throat> so Qualley and Wilson won temporary guardianship. It is critical to obtain a temporary guardianship to avoid CPS intervention and ensure that Wyoming can remain in a safe, stable home with people who have cared for her and a parental role for the majority of her life. They said that Crazy couldn't be trusted. Given her long life cycle of drug abuse and homelessness, she got no job, she's not interested in getting a job, and there's zero support from Wyoming's biological father, who was a crack addict named Tim. So that was last week. This week, things progressed. And the police were called to Rainey's house on May 1st. And basically, Crazy asked this court to deny the petition. She said that she had met Anthony Wilson when he reached out to her about being in the film. And Crazy said, I'll, I'll work with you. But she accused Rainey and Anthony of having set out from the beginning to mislead me into believing that they were interested in helping me better my life and help me with my child. In hindsight, I see that I was being exploited by petitioners instead of helped. And Crazy said, hey, <clears throat> I have housing now. I can provide for my daughter. And then Rainey's attorney revealed in a new filing that the police were called on May 1st. <clears throat> Rainey's lawyer had called Crazy to tell her that Rainey would be keeping the child until the guardianship hearing. Well, Crazy objected to this and showed up to Rainey's house with a male friend. Rainey invited the, the duo into her home to visit with the child. Crazy took the child outside and then demanded the petitioners let her leave with the child. 
And Rainey's attorney said, I listened over the phone as petitioners reiterated their concerns about the minor's safety in her care, the instability of her living situation, and tried to reason with her. Mother insisted that she needed to take the baby to a follow-up doctor's appointment. I asked if she would allow the petitioners to go with her to the appointment and then take the minor home afterward. Mother stated she would not bring the minor back to the petitioners. <clears throat> and then Rainey's lawyer said Crazy called the police after Rainey refused to give her the child's car seat. Two officers arrived, spoke to the parties outside of Rainey's home. The actress showed the officers a copy of the petition filed in the court and explained the situation, but the police sided with Crazy. The officers consulted their supervisor and informed that the mother was entitled to take the minor because there was no current custody orders, no DCSF evaluation confirming risk to the child. And the court has yet to rule on the petition. Well, if you thought things couldn't get any more crazy with Drake, a man identified as a security guard for Drake was wounded in a shooting outside Drake's Toronto mansion around 2 o'clock this morning. He was taken to the hospital with a gunshot wound. It does not appear to be related to the rap beef, at least as I'm speaking now. But the shooting occurred outside the gates of Drake's 50,000 square foot mansion, <laughs> but did not involve Drake. And Drake had previously been permitted to build fences twice as high as allowed by city law, citing a need for increased security. <clears throat> and Toronto police, like I said, they don't think it's related to the rap stuff. But Lamar is not like us that can, was released on Saturday. And don't forget, it has an aerial shot of Drake's house on a map as its cover art. And the covers edited to portray the home is dotted with markers meant to represent the presence of registered sex offenders. So, you know, that's just tragic. And hopefully the security guard is going to recover. There has also been news in the Sean Combs case, at least one of them. <clears throat> this is the one where the, the girl was raped. Um, back in 1990, and basically she's moving the case. And this is a letter to the judge. Plaintiff and this writer have received information from several witnesses, a former employee of UMG subsidiary Uptown Records, and a Bad Boys record executive. This new information adds context to the plaintiff's claims and clarifies the timeline. The first and second witnesses have photos of plaintiff and defendant Aaron Hall from the day of the assault, which was taken a few hours before he raped plaintiff. The first and second witnesses also confirmed that the 16-year-old plaintiff was assaulted at the MCA event in New York City, went to dinner in New York City, and then was taken to New Jersey where the rape occurred. <clears throat> so they're going to move the case from New York City to New Jersey. It remains to be seen how this whole timeline is going to be affected. And I guess sticking with the court theme, we will talk about 50 Cent. 50 Cent is suing his ex, Daphne Joy, for defamation. You know, she accused him of rape and abuse, and they're having this ongoing custody battle with their 12-year-old son. But 50 Cent claimed that Joy falsely and publicly accused him of rape and physical abuse and made a purposeful attempt on information and belief to destroy his personal and business reputation, harm Jackson's commercial and business interests, negatively affect his custody case, and prevent him from seeing his minor son. <clears throat> And Joy had made these allegations, what, back in March on Instagram, and 50 had denied them. And he said that he's been subjected to extensive public ridicule, hatred, and contempt, and he's looking to vindicate his rights and protect his reputation. He also wants punitive damage, exemplary damages. And basically, um, <clears throat> he tried to get her to take it down before... He sued, um, but she wouldn't. They said, despite being given ample opportunity to retract a false and malicious retaliatory accusation, Daphne Joy has shamefully chosen to interfere with her son's relationship with his loving father by falsely calling him a rapist. The motivation behind this appears to be her unfortunate entanglement and misguided loyalty to Sean Combs, who we believe to be underwriting this attack and whom Mr. Jonks Jackson has been warning Daphne Joy and others about for many years. Now, Jean Smart wins the great story of the day. And she was on the Drew Barrymore show and said that Harry Styles checks into hotels using the alias Deborah Vance. That is the character that Jean Smart plays on Hacks. And she said that basically Harry Styles uses that when he checks in. 
And she also said that he's such a big fan of hacks that he has sent Gene several lavish gifts in the last few years, but they've never met. She says, I've never met the man, unfortunately, but we did an episode where it shows that Deborah collects antique salt and pepper shakers. And about a week or two after it aired, I get this beautiful bouquet of flowers and a package. And inside was this gorgeous vintage salt shaker that looked almost exactly like the one we used in the show. It was from Harry, and I found out it was from Harry because I knew his then-girlfriend, Olivia Wilde, and she told me that it was from him. <clears throat> then he gave me and my youngest tickets to his show. Then we found out that he was using Deborah Vance's name to check into hotels as his alias. There was a picture of him standing next to his bodyguard, and his bodyguard had the envelope with his keys and everything, and it said D. Vance. Very good story. That's a great story. Janet Kramer has jumped on the Travis Kelsey is a drunk theme because she always likes attention. But she was on her podcast, Wind Down. She said to me, he's always drunk. Every time I've ever seen a video, he's just always drunk. And I hope that Taylor doesn't follow in his footsteps. I see her drinking more now, like the company you keep. <laughs> and that Kelsey's aggression yelling at Coach Andy Reid during the February Super Bowl rubbed her the wrong way. And she said he reminds her of an ex, despite her initially thinking they were the cutest couple. And Jana will talk about anybody. Oh, I wasn't going to talk about this, but I kind of feel like I have to. Like the Kim Kardashian dress for the Met Gala. First of all, it's the same thing you do every year. Second of all, you always do the whole corset kind of thing every single year. You always talk about, oh, I, lo I lost 20 pounds. I did this, I did this, I did this. There's a video of her trying to climb the steps where she can't do it. She can't breathe. There's people basically helping her up the stairs. When your lips are turning blue and you can't breathe, perhaps you're not really sending the right message. Her waist looked smaller than her neck. And everybody thought, huh, this is kind of normal. And then, in something that just boggles the mind, Netflix decided to edit the roast. And the part that they edited was there's no more booing Kim Kardashian. If you watched it live, you heard the boos. You can go online and hear the boos. But they took it out for the final three-hour version. And now, instead of the booze, she just arrives at the podium and starts the roast. And nobody would be the wiser that she was booed. I mean, are they doing that because they want to have a relationship with her? I don't know. I do know that Britney Spears and Paul Solis are still having a relationship. She was spotted driving around with Paul yesterday. You know, the driving around Mercedes. For, she was driving by herself. And then all of a sudden, she picks him up. He gets into the driver's seat. They roll down the windows, the paparazzi can get some photos, and then they went on. So much for her ankle, you know, keeping her from doing anything. So actress Susan Buckner, she is best known for playing uh, cheerleader uh, Patty Simcox in Greece. She has died. And she made a name for herself on the pageant circuit. She won Miss Washington in 1971, represented the state and Miss America, and then she took that talent and she became one of the gold diggers, which is an all female singing and dancing group featured on the Dean Martin show, but she will always be known for playing Patty in Greece. Now a story that I feel like I didn't ever mention in the 47,000 parts of the Lindsay Lohan thing. And now I wish that I had is something that Bed Midler talked about on David Duchovny's podcast fail better, which is on Lemonada. <laughs> But she was talking about her show, Bet, and she said it was a big, big mistake. It launched on CBS in 2000, ran for one season with 16 episodes, and it starred Bette Midler as a famous singer and actress who was adored by fans. In the pilot episode, Lindsay Lohan plays her 13-year-old daughter, Rose. But Lindsay dropped out of the project, and Bette feels that may have contributed to the show being a flop. Things happened that were so astonishing. I didn't know those things could happen. For instance, Lindsay Lohan was cast as my daughter in the pilot. Well, after the pilot, Lindsay decided she didn't want to do it or she had other fish to fry. So Lindsay left the building and I said, now what do we do? And she said, I also played a big part in why it didn't do well. Bet. Does it get any more generic than that? Bet. A big, big mistake. I think for several reasons. Now, something that we've all been wondering about is at hand. 
the filming for season two of Wednesday is now in production in Ireland. Netflix revealed the full cast for the new season. Got Jenna Ortega, got Catherine Zeta-Jones, Luis Guzman. Everybody's coming back except for Percy Hines White. He didn't make the cut. Netflix wasn't going to do that at all. I think that it was probably, I think that because there had been enough time, maybe they would, but obviously they have gone a different direction. One of my favorite things is when two people who obviously like each other get together and they talk about a movie which really made their careers and, you know, how much they liked each other during the filming and how much they still like each other. And Keanu Reeves and Sandra Bullock got together to talk about speed. It is an extremely long interview, and I don't want to read, like, one part of it. And it was, Keanu had originally turned down speed. And Keanu goes, well, you didn't see that original script. Scripts go through certain phases. There's a script that comes out, the script that the director ultimately will have their imprint on. I don't recall what was going on in terms of work at the time, but then I remember meeting with Jan, and yeah, once it was jumping on board, it was jumping on board. Now, Sandra Bullock <clears throat> said, hey, what was I going to say, no? Yes, it was all yes. But I also wasn't the first choice. I wasn't the second choice. I don't think I was the third choice, but I was a choice. And I was so excited and happy to be there. Some of the best moments of my life. I wasn't the first choice. I had the best time. And I was allowed to be who I thought Annie should be. So, I mean, I was looking for nothing. I was just grateful and excited to be with who I was with. And I just adored and still adore Keanu. We didn't think it would do what it did, but I didn't know any better at the time either. I wasn't in control of my career. I was in control well of a steering wheel, but I wasn't in control of that bus. I was just along for the ride, you know? I love that kind of story in those kind of interviews. And she talked about, like, her audition. She just sat there with, like, a fake steering wheel in her hand and everything. Very cool. All right, the blind items revealed. Number one's from April 29th. The celebrity offspring, who is a B-plus list celebrity in her own right, has not denied the relationship with the actor or that her mom stole him. She just took a shot at someone who brought it up on social media. And that's Noah Cyrus, Dominic Purcell, and Tish Cyrus. Number two is from April 29th. Speaking of a permanent A-list athletes, perhaps next time he visits the, this particular country and he promises one of the leaders a certain amount of money after what he did to a woman in the country, he would be well advised to pay the money. And that's Floyd Mayweather and the United Arab Emirates. Number three is from April 29th. Someone should ask the permanent A-list foreign-born model about the little beach town in Kenya where she owns multiple villas and their huge underage sex tourism issue. The people who own the villas in the town are some of the same ones who contributed to her do-nothing charity. Fees. Naomi Campbell and Melinda Kenya. Number four is from April 29th. It was the controversial comedian slash host who started the rumors in the first place about her joining a West Coast franchise. That would have never happened. And that's Chelsea Handler and Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Number five is from April 30th. The permanent A-list singer was trying to bring drugs with her the last time she left the country. The pilot of the plane told her he would not take off unless she got rid of them prior to takeoff. She complied. And that is Britney Spears. And that is it for this one, you guys. I will talk to you.